hand it over to you, Mr. Stan. Yes. Now you all know the Calgary greeting, at least for me. So what I didn't tell at the end of that story was that despite crushing my professor's hand, right after Peter got out of the out of the jungle, they took him on back up to Palenque. I was actually off at my other site and I had heard through the grapevine that there had been a helicopter that had been flying over there that had seen all these guys running naked through the jungle. And then they were lost. And so I'd heard that Peter's wife and Armando's wife were coming on down and I figured I was going to have to go console the widows. So I went in with our uh, Mexican project director and lo and behold that was the very night that Peter and Armando and the rest of them made it out. And so Peter even under those circumstances, made certain that I was taken care of off in a city that when I went off to head into town, I had no idea that this was going to be happening. I ended up staying there for three or four days. And despite all of that, Peter was there. So that is definitely Peter's character. I did not know that when I first went to Calgary. So a number of you know that I went to Calgary in 1994, but the very first year you have in archaeology program there, you have to take an entire set list of courses. And I had gone to Calgary with the sole goal that I was going to be studying with, the Peter Matthews. I could not take a single course with him. And I was intimidated enough, I never even went to talk to him that entire first year. So one year I'd be hovering around, there was the, the door of, of Peter. And it wasn't until, of course, years later, I, I realized I had, should have had nothing to fear. Nothing to fear except leaving a computer with him or anything like that. I can well I have seen him destroy a number of computers. Technology is not his high point. And so how he would teach his epigraphy class was that he would focus on chronology. And you'd have to work out all those dates by hand. And that's probably why of all of his students, only Mark and I have ever decided to continue with epigraphy. <laughs> <laughs> but it all worked out. Peter and I have had a, a connection in terms of our interest in chronology. And so when I finally graduated in 1999 from Calgary, that was when Peter was heading down to Australia. And he needed a student to help start up his program out there and very kindly got me a scholarship to work for two years with no coursework, doing my master's degree in Australia. Hell yeah. So I went on down there. <laughs> But the very first words that Peter told me as I was coming off the plane wasn't, how are you doing? How was the trip? Welcome to Australia. No, it was, you're barracking for Geelong. And it was only then that I started realizing how big his passion for Aussie rules football is. But knowing Peter, I also knew that if he was telling me Geelong was the team that everybody in our archaeology school there was cheering for, I was a little suspicious, and sure enough, I find out everybody else in the area hates that team. They are the <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers of the Aussie Rules football team. That so, is a lie! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. my only way of getting back at Peter was to find out his daughter was dating a guy who had been cheering for the Collingwood football team. I knew nothing about any of the other teams, but I figure, that's my team. <laughs> so for the last 15 years, every time I see Peter at a conference, I always have to check to see whether his team has done better than mine. And I can say happily, both of ours are out. It's all over here. <laughs> but it wasn't just me who Peter was deciding to toy with off in Australia. I remember as soon as I got there, Armando was telling me that Peter had took him, taken him down to the beach to see the shoreline around Melbourne and told him you have to watch out for the Mexican flat sharks. <laughs> Mexican flat sharks are these sharks that are very flat. They sit underneath the sand and they only will eat Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see this is the kind of relationship that Peter has with his students. I just got to add something there. <laughs> yeah, you had your turn. <laughs> well, I, I think I can maybe stop some other people talking if I fill up some space. <laughs> <laughs>
it's not quite. It, where, where's Armando? Here. Oh, okay. Well, you, you you can remember this, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Mexican flat sharks, they're a bona fide species, in, in a subspecies, I should say, because there's the Guatemalan flat shark as well. But <laughs> they're actually very flat vertically, not horizontally, um, in, li in line with their tail. And what they do is they kind of curve themselves around rock pools and just lie flat on the edge of the rock pool. And when I was telling Armando this, he was actually paddling in a rock pool. <laughs> I have never seen anyone get out of a rock pool so far. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I, I say you want to watch out and explain about Mexican flat sharks. And, and he's saying, oh, sure, you're, you're kidding. And I, I said, I am not kidding. How many Mexicans do you see? <laughs> So now you know, if you ever go to Melbourne, don't bring any of your Mexican friends along. <laughs> well, because of things like this, it got a little competitive between Peter and, and then Armando and I. So Peter would have lunch with us and then innocently ask, would you like to play some table tennis? Because right at the, at the dining hall, they had some table tennis tables off in the back. And so we would start on up. And Peter would say, oh, let's have a little friendly wager there. And everything would be going along just fine, and then he would smoke us. <laughs> and it wasn't until quite a number of months later, and I remember Armando was certain he would finally be able to beat Peter. It wasn't until months later we realized that Peter was about as close as you can get to being a pro in table tennis. So that's one of the little things you do not know about Peter Matthews. <laughs> But, one of the other reasons for why you won't see many of Peter's students continuing on in epigraphy has to do with the midterm exam he always liked to give out. This was to hand out copies of some monuments from Site Q, or La Corona as we now know it, and Peter would simply hand these out to all the students and you'd have three hours. And he'd simply state, you can use anything you want to figure out these texts, and then he, as he was leaving, he was chuckling under his breath. We all knew this is not a, good, not a good thing. So we were simply supposed to write down everything we could say about these monuments, starting with the calendar, Peter's favorite topic. What he didn't tell the students is that there are half a dozen errors in about ten dates on this monument. And you, it doesn't matter whether you start from the front or the back, you're going to run into these errors. So after 20 minutes, we're all, I'm already starting to hear people who are cursing out Peter on this. I had thankfully borrowed from Peter just the day before the 94 and 95 workbooks. So I had all of that data down there and I was cruising along. So the only reason that I managed to get through that class was because I already had all the data at hand. <laughs> so all in all I can state that from that I figured now I know what not to do in, in a glyph class. Except this summer off in El Mirador, I had to hand over the Site Q monument. So I am carrying on the legacy of Peter Matthews by terrorizing students with chronology. But chronology, that has always been my topic, uh, my favorite topic in, in looking at the Maya. Something I've carried on now for 16, 17 years since I met Peter. And I can certainly state all the hard work that we had put in into those classes, having to work out dates by hand, has paid off in dividends. So I can certainly state I had never had a better epigraphy teacher than Peter Matthews. And because I went to the University of Calgary specifically to see Peter, that was the entire basis for my getting into my archaeology. When I got out of high school, I had the grand idea I was going to make it big in rock and roll. So one night of practicing Black Sabbath with my friends and I realized that future is not happening. I decided to go into my archaeology and it's of course because of my archaeology that I'm here with you all. So I can certainly thank Peter for not only myself but for all the rest of his students there that we owe it for being able to hang out with all of you guys 
to Peter Matthews. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.